um, and, and she's being purified from that. Um, the reason why I say that, I mean, we have the fathers all, all the way and they talk about this purification and then you, you have, you know, Gregory Palamas and he's, and, and I showed this to uh, William earlier. Um, he talks about, um, you know, he says, uh, for the physical impulse to pr reproduce is involuntary and does not obey the law of our mind. Although some people do bring it forcibly into subjection. And then he says that this whole idea is due to the fall. It's like corruption, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, um, Which, by the he, way, is uh, mm -hmm. Augustinian thought. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, you can find a hint of this in Cyril, but you can't find that language. So, And he also does something that Cyril doesn't do. Uh, that one citation that you gave, is that around, um, is that uh, homily either, uh, is it homily 52 or 15? So I, I don't know exactly which one, but it's mm -hmm. on the entry of the mother of God into the Holy of Holies. Yeah. Homily one. yeah. So 52 or 53. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and in fact, uh, that he repeats that same line in another homily, which I believe might be homily 15. Oh, okay. And so that phraseology that he's using there uh, is actually, he gives an exemption. He says, he says with Joke and Amana, he's implying that they're exempt, uh, which is, exempting human beings from the normal law of passion and passion and coitus, which Augustine doesn't seem to do. So he's going beyond Augustine here. Yes. But go ahead, please continue your exegesis. Yeah, and um, I appreciate that thought because, you know, it goes to the next, his next point is basically, so he sets up this idea of humanity being fallen and inclined to, um, to this kind of impulse, right? And then he says, um, it, it's a sign of original condemnation, being synonymous with corruption and producing children. And then he, and then he sets that up. And then the next line, he says, uh, God was not just born among men, but born of a holy and pure virgin, or more precisely of this exceedingly pure and most holy of virgins, who was not only above any physical stain, but also far beyond the reach of any defiled carnal thoughts. Uh, and then he talks about the conception of Christ being, you know, from, from a virgin. Well, the interesting part about this to me is, you know, he sets that up and then he says, and he excludes her from that. At least yeah. that's how I read it. Um, and correct yeah, me if I'm but, wrong. Now, notice here that it's he's concentrated on physical stain. And this is actually what I ended up presenting at, at Oxford. You do have a minor tradition in Byzantine theology, uh, which starts with origin, uh, which is interested in... Uh, Psalm 50 or 51, depending on your your um, your original text. Um, in 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 uh, sin, my mother bore me, and uh, I was conceived in iniquities. We know this line. Um, Origen uh, attributes this to, um, or Origen extrapolates from this some sense of carnal passion in conception. And Origen attributes male seed as being the carrier. So any sort of um, man ejaculating in um, sexual intercourse in coitus uh, is going to be styled as someone who brings stain, right? This tradition, now we don't know to what extent Origin means this as a metaphor, or to what extent he means this quite literally. But Augustine read Origin in Latin translation. And uh, that may be the source for Augustine. Now, some have claimed Manichaeism. Maybe it's a mixture of both. Maybe it's one. Maybe it's the other. But we can't deny that he knew the doctrine from Origin. And Psalm 50 was obsessively considered in the Latin tradition after Augustine with regard to the doctrine of original sin just like Origen. Also, St. Basil the Great, who collected uh, Origen's discussion for his Philokalia, seems to affirm the importance of this for baptism. Next, uh, we have famously uh, St. Cyril of uh, Alexandria, who perhaps before Maximus the Confessor has the most to say about original sin, uh, which I know William has probably done work on this with Cyril because he's had to debate on this issue. It's Cyril who gets the closest to Gregory Palamas, but doesn't quite get 
to the degree of association between coitus and stain. That's what's new. We've already had since 1996, several different proofs that, August that Augustine was read and quoted by St. Gregory Palamas. He uh, read Augustine's De Trinitate. Now there is some mention of original sin in the De Trinitate or, or Augustine's work on the Trinity. What's interesting here is these lines sound more like Augustine's work against the Pelagians. But we don't have any evidence that Palamas actually read translations, which we don't know to exist, of these other works. So how does he have any idea about such a close association be between being conceived in stain, your word, from your translation, so you, you are conceived in physical stain because you were conceived in coitus. Um, and my presentation uh, several weeks ago was basically showing that everything that is in Augustine's sermons can be found in about six previous sermons in the Latin West for the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. 